Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly, and now we're going to do 2024 AP Pre-Calculus free response question number four. This is everybody's favorite, right? So we have to do a lot of algebra here. A1, they want you to solve for g of x, which is given up here. It's going to be equal to 10. So this isn't too hard of a problem here. So we're just going... Man, look at that arrow. That is... Oh, it's going to be one of those days. So we get 10 equals e to the x plus 3. All right, so in order to get that x out of the exponent, we have to use a log. Right? And we have to use the same log that the base is. So that's the natural log. So we're going to get the natural log of 10. we got to do it on the left. If we're going to do it on the right, the natural log of e to the x plus 3. Okay. If you remember, these guys kind of cancel each other. So on the right, you're going to get x plus 3. And on the left, we still have the natural log of 10. If we subtract 3 from each side, natural log of 10 minus 3 will equal x. There's our answer for part 1. That was pretty easy, right? Cool. So now we're going to go to number two. Number two wants you to solve h of x equals pi over four. So let's write that out. Pi over four equals arc sine. Now remember, arc sine is the same thing as inverse sine. I teach my students it means the angle whose sine is x over two in this case. So what I'm going to do to solve this, I'm going to take the sine of both sides. So we get the sine of pi over four equals the sine of arc sine, or the angle whose sine is x over two. I'll put that in parentheses. Now look, if you take the sine of the angle whose sine is x over two, that's just gonna equal x over two, right? Take the sine of the angle whose sine is x over two. It's x over two, right? You took the sine of an angle whose sine. On the left here, the sine of pi over four. Well, that is a unit circle problem. You gotta know that. That's radical two over two. Uh, so now what? Multiply both sides by 2 and you get radical 2 equals x. And we're done with that one. That was easy as well. I don't think that was too difficult. Now the next one, part B, you have two functions here. J of x, you are obviously checking your exponent or your logarithm rules. So we're going to get J of x is going to equal here. Now here's some of our rules. If you have a coefficient, it can go up as an exponent on the argument. That's called the argument. This is the argument. That's the argument. Now, the other thing that I tell my students, if you're going to condense these all into a single log, that any of these logs that are positive will end up in the top of the fraction. All right, so in the top, we're going to get 8x to the fifth. Oh, that's an x. Uh, times 2x squared. And anything that's negative ends up in the bottom of the fraction. So it's all over x to the ninth. So if we were to simplify this, we get the log base 10 of what goes in the top 16 x to the seventh in the bottom we have an x to the ninth still seven of those x's on top are going to cancel seven of those will cancel seven of these and it'll leave two right so your final answer is log base 10 of 16 over x squared and that'll get you full credit right there now some students ask do you have to write the base of 10 because a common log already the base of 10 and uh, no, you didn't have to write the 10, but they gave it to you. So you should look at the question. It says your, your results should be of the form log base 10 of something. And that's what we have, uh, log base 10 of something. So we answer the question. Now, part two, we need to rewrite this trig expression as a single term, and you can only use tangent. All right, let's write this out. And so here we go. I wrote out the function, and I also wrote out my identity over here, which should be in your brain, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And I notice I have a 1 minus sine squared. So it's like they subtracted this from each side. And you got 1 minus sine squared of x. That's equal to cosine squared. So all this is going to equal cosine squared of x in the top. The bottom, I'll just keep a sine of x. And I know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I will just write 1 over cosine x. Now what are we going to do? Let's One of these cosines, we'll take one of these away. And we're left with cosine over sine. Now, cosine over sine is cotangent of x, right? That's all we have, cotangent of x. But they want us to write it as a single term involving only tangent. And so, for my final answer, I know the cotangent is 1 over the tangent of x. And look, I wrote it as a single term, only with tangent. Done. Not too bad. Last one, part C. Part C says we have a function here. And man, it's, this is ugly. But we want to find all the values of the domain that yield an output of zero. So when we plug a zero here for the output, that will equal the inverse cosine of the tangent of 2x. Okay, so this can get a little confusing because we have a 
inverse cosine of a tangent of an angle all equals zero so what can we do here well I don't like that inverse cosine so how do you get rid of it let's take the cosine of both sides so the cosine of zero is going to equal the cosine of all this garbage cosine inverse of tangent of 2x okay oh, did I have all right that's a lot of parentheses but these guys will undo each other if I take the cosine of the angle whose cosine is tangent of 2x I just get the tangent of 2x and so the reason I know to do that is I kind of looked at this and I'm like if I take the cosine they're opposite but I have to do the cosine of zero too. I love memorizing my cosine little uh, graph right here. And I know it's zero cosine is equal to one. You could also look at your unit circle because that's going to come in useful right now. The tangent of some angle. I'll just call this some angle, right? So the tangent of this angle is one. I know from my unit circle that this angle is 45. This has to be 45 degrees. Ooh, I don't want to say 45. I want to say pi over four, right? It has to be pi over four because I know the tangent of pi over four is one. So two X has to equal pi over four. Two X has to be pi over four. And that comes from your unit circle. Now, the other thing we have to t take into consideration is tangent is positive one. That happens in the first quadrant, but it also happens in the third quadrant. And how do you get over there? You add pi. So plus pi n, because remember this question wants you to find all the values. We're not just finding the values one time around from zero to two pi or any other restricted domain. We have to find all the values. So to do that, when we have a tangent function, we can just add pi and add pi and add pi. And we can go around the circle as many times as we want. But we're not done yet because we need to solve for x and we solve for 2x. So to get rid of that two, we can just divide. But you know what I'm gonna to do to make it a little bit easier to understand? I'm just gonna multiply both sides by one half. And that way I can just distribute it. These will cancel, right? And I get x equals. So when I distribute this, what do we get? Pi over four times a half is pi over eight. And uh, what do we get here? Plus pi times a half. That's just pi over two times n. Where n is an integer, okay? is an integer and I think that there will get us a pretty good grade on number four from 2004. Man that wasn't too difficult was it? I mean it wasn't too bad. Hey this is Mr. Kelly remember it's nice to be important it's more important to be nice. Good luck out there.